Okay, let's continue with step 11. Thank you for helping us practice step 11 by sharing your guidance through two-way prayer and three-way prayer. Hopefully you will continue this practice and develop a meditation life. It's so critical to develop and grow in a relationship with a higher power of your understanding. As far as I'm concerned, that was the primary purpose for this book. Let's go to page 86, paragraph 1. Page 86, paragraph 1, and it starts with, When we retire at night. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do we owe an apology? Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? What could we have done better? Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Or were we thinking of what we could do for others, of what we could pack into the stream of life? But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for that would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. Okay, we're still in step 11, and this is the evening review or inventory. Just as a quick reminder, our first inventory was in step 4. Our second inventory was in step 10, and this is our third inventory. And there are some questions and when you see a question mark in the big book, that's a stop sign. Stop and ask yourself the question. But the part I want to emphasize right now is at the end of the quote where it says, After making our review, we ask God, that's a prayer, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. Inquire means meditation. For example, if you were resentful today, you were mad, and you did a 10 step on it, and you ask God to take that resentment away, and you come home and it's evening, and you do this review, and you've been resentful and you did a 10 step on it earlier during the day and it's this is the evening review it says after making our review we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken so for this particular example I would say God please forgive me for being angry and resentful and in meditation the word inquire means that we get quiet again. We take a five-minute quiet time, and we listen to God. And it says, inquire what corrective measures should be taken. So in this review, we simply take a review e each evening, answering the questions. And then again, if for in this particular example, if I had resentment, anger, I would ask God for God's forgiveness, and then I would get quiet for five minutes and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. And again, this is, this is considered inspiration, intuitive thought. And again, we use the test for the four absolutes. You know, is it coming from God or is it coming from us? 
So we apply the four absolutes from what we receive in our five-minute quiet time when we inquire what corrective measures should be taken. And again, this is an experience with God. As you grow in spirituality, you will become more content and peaceful and the promises will start to come true in your life as you develop your spirituality. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do we owe an apology? Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? What could we have done better? Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Or were we thinking of what we could do for others, of what we could pack into the stream of life? But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for that would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. For now, let's continue for one more quote for step 11, and we'll move on to step 12. Let's go to page 87, paragraph 3. Page 87, paragraph 3. As we go through the day, we pause, when agitated or doubtful, and ask for the right thought or action. We constantly remind ourselves we are no longer running the show, humbly saying to ourselves many times each day, Thy will be done. We are then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, or foolish decisions. We become much more efficient. We do not tire so easily, for we are not burning up energy foolishly as we did when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. It works. It really does. We alcoholics are undisciplined, so we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. As we go through the day, we pause when agitated or doubtful, and ask for the right thought or action. As we go through the day, we pause, if we're agitated or doubtful, and ask for the right thought or action. So there's a prayer where we ask God for the right thought or action, but I want to emphasize the word pause. That is so important. So here again, we're asking God, that's a prayer, for guidance, inspiration, intuitive thought, or decision. So I just want to emphasize that, that we pause when we're agitated or doubtful. The directions for step 11 can be found in the book Alcoholics Anonymous on pages 85 to 88. Let's move on to step 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Okay, in step 12, it clearly says that we have a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. That is written in the past tense. The founders, pioneers, 
wrote down their experiences and this is something that we follow follow their path spiritual awakening is in reference to a psychic change our personality change is sufficient enough that we have sobriety in step 12 we have a spiritual awakening this implies that our spirit was asleep but we do have a discipline a daily reprieve contingent on our spiritual condition so we have a discipline to keep spiritually fit and hopefully you will continue to practice these principles in all your affairs Let's go to page 84, paragraph 3, page 84, paragraph 3. And we have ceased fighting anything or anyone, even alcohol. For by this time sanity will have returned. We will seldom be interested in liquor. If tempted, we recoil from it as from a hot flame. We react sanely and normally, and we will find that this has happened automatically. We will see that our new attitude toward liquor has been given us without any thought or effort on our part. It just comes. That is the miracle of it. We are not fighting it. Neither are we avoiding temptation. We feel as though we had been placed in a position of neutrality, safe and protected. We have not even sworn off. Instead, the problem has been removed. It does not exist for us. We are neither cocky nor are we afraid. That is our experience. That is how we react, so long as we keep in fit spiritual condition. That is our experience. That is how we react, so long as we keep in fit spiritual condition. Okay, in reference to step 12... We have chapter 7, Working with Others. That whole chapter is devoted towards working with others. Pages 89 to 103. Again, detailed directions on what to do, how to do it, when to do it. So let's go with a quote on page 89, paragraph 1 page 89 paragraph 1 chapter 7 working with others Practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. It works when other activities fail. This is our twelfth suggestion. Carry this message to other alcoholics. You can help when no one else can. You can secure their confidence when others fail. Remember, they are very ill. Okay, this will be the last quote for step 12. Let's go to page 99, paragraph 3. Page 99, paragraph 3.
Let no alcoholic say he cannot recover unless he has his family back. This just isn't so. In some cases, the wife will never come back for one reason or another. Remind the prospect that his recovery is not dependent upon people. It is dependent upon his relationship with God. We have seen men get well whose families have not returned at all. We have seen others slip when the family came back too soon. Both you and the new man must walk day by day in the path of spiritual progress. If you persist, remarkable things will happen. When we look back, we realize that the things which came to us when we put ourselves in God's hands were better than anything we could have planned. Follow the dictates of a higher power, and you will presently live in a new and wonderful world, no matter what your present circumstances. This concludes our session for steps 11 and 12. I want to thank you for being here, and I want to thank you for letting me help you today. Hopefully we'll see you next week for Steps 1 and 2 on the first Sunday of the month. Here I have a couple quotes out of the big book. I want to share some information describing a sharing partner. A sharing partner is an alcoholic who's recovered from alcoholism through the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, has had a spiritual awakening, and is willing to help the new person through the 12 steps. Chapter 2. There is a solution. We of Alcoholics Anonymous know thousands of men and women who were once just as hopeless as Bill. Nearly all have recovered. They have solved the drink problem. We are average Americans. All sections of this country and many of its occupations are represented as well as many political, economic, social, and religious backgrounds. We are people who normally would not mix. But there exists among us a fellowship, a friendliness, and an understanding, which is indescribably wonderful. The ex-problem drinker who has found this solution, who is properly armed with facts about himself, can generally win the entire confidence of another alcoholic in a few hours. Until such an understanding is reached, little or nothing can be accomplished. That the man who is making the approach has had the same difficulty, that he obviously knows what he is talking about, that his whole deportment shouts at the new prospect that he is a man with a real answer, that he has no attitude of holier than thou, nothing whatever except the sincere desire to be helpful, that there are no fees to pay, no axes to grind, no people to please, no lectures to be endured. These are the conditions we have found most effective. Chapter 7. Working with Others Practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. It works when other activities fail. This is our twelfth suggestion. Carry this message to other alcoholics. You can help when no one else can. You can secure their confidence when others fail. Remember, they are very ill. Life will take on new meaning. To watch people recover, to see them help others, to watch loneliness vanish, to see a fellowship grow up about you, to have a host of friends, this is an experience you must not miss. We know you will not want to miss it. Frequent contact with newcomers and with each other is the bright spot of our lives. Beginner's Big Book Group provides sharing partners for those who want to take the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Will the sharing partners who want to work with others please raise your hand? 
Thank you. I have one last quote from the big book. It comes from the chapter, A Vision for You. And then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Abandon yourself to God as you understand God. Admit your faults to Him and to your fellows. Clear away the wreckage of your past. Give freely of what you find and join us. We shall be with you in the fellowship of the Spirit, and you will surely meet some of us as you trudge the road of happy destiny. May God bless you and keep you. Until then. In honor of our AA pioneers and the old tradition, we'll simply stand without holding hands and close this meeting with the Lord's Prayer. <laughs>